Okay, I'll try and be quick because everybody will be ready for a cup of tea. Um, so welcome to my topic. Um, I'm looking at keeping discussion topics fresh. Um, so as well as working um, in the School for Business and Society at York, my background includes working with businesses, developing training, del delivering training, face-to-face, -face, online and distance learning. So I've always found that um, engagement with tasks, case studies, activities always work best when the participants are interested in the topic. Um, so just a, a, an example, if I've been delivering some safeguarding, then I always use up to date um, serious case reviews um, for authenticity, interest and relevance. Now, this particular example that I'm chatting to, with you today um, is um, what I wanted to share about an online module that I lead on. So just background, um, the online module is delivered over eight weeks. Uh, it's a master's level and um, it's in uh, a business related program and it's asynchronous. So we don't have any of this live uh, problems because it is all asynchronous. So we have an, a weekly discussion. So the, the, um, the, each week we'll have introduced um, to a, a key topic. Um, we'll have some activities, we'll have some reading and we'll check in with the students on their learning. And then we will have a weekly discussion. So I wanted to resolve um, some of the following issues that I was finding with these weekly asynchronous discussions. One of them was as the eight weeks was progressing, it's about um, retaining the students engagement and the further along the module, the less engagement we, we seem to have. And then it was also encouraging a discussion rather than just having posts onto the discussion. Um, so often students would just answer the kind of um, element that we were looking at rather than getting into a conversation with each other. I also um, wanted to look at how to encourage different opinions and thoughts because often a couple of students would post on a discussion board and then I, it seemed like other students would read these and put similar ideas on the board as if they thought perhaps these are the right things to say so I'm going to put something similar. And then the other element was to put the student um, at the heart of the discussion um, so I really wanted to increase the engagement and create a feeling of belonging in the group um, and add, obviously add to the community of inquiry. Next slide, thank you. So overall, I was hoping that something fresh could provoke a response and I use the word provoke um, and I will come back to that later. I also um, was looking to allow the student to apply the theory without worrying about whether it was right or wrong. Um, I wanted to kind of look and see if I could get them to open up to think for themselves in just instead of relying on the, the literature and the Google searches. And one of the, again, with the student being at the heart of, of the programme, I wanted to look at how I could improve their confidence so that they could think that they can contribute that they're being listened to um, and realise that their ideas are important as well. Next slide, thank you. So in the discussions, I'm always hoping that they can demonstrate their understanding of the topic that we're doing that week. I want them to apply the knowledge to a scenario um, and I want to get them to partake in some critical analysis or reflection. And I realise that students on this in this online environment, they're already at a distance. So there's the physical distance between myself and them. There's the physical distance between them and their peers on, on the course. Um, and there's also this cultural distance and there can be a distance in the experiences that they have as well that they're bringing to the, the programme. So I can't change that distance um, and sometimes it, I think the problem is that they, there is that distance from the concepts that are trying to learn. So I really wanted to try and look at how I could reduce some of the distances. So if I'm not able to change that physical element, that idea of the, 
the abstract concept. Maybe I could give them something that they can relate to so that, that there's something that's not too far away from what they know. Next slide, thank you. So a lot of discussions that, that we often do in business are focused on historical events, um, historical situations, historical case studies. Um, so we could you know, consider things like Blockbuster Video, Enron, some of these case studies. These are, are, are ideas that students probably don't know anymore. Um, Enron happened over 20 years ago. Some of the students would have been two years old by then, so they were perhaps not really uh, hear about that. Um, many students will have never borrowed a video in their lives. So for this reason, obviously there are valid reasons for having some of these historical, uh, historical ideas. Um, and there's so much experience that we can bring forward from historical events. But I wanted to look at another option for one of these discussions. I wanted to show a different way. And I wanted to reduce the amount of abstract ideas for these students um, and try and reduce some of the barriers um, and enable them to contribute to the discussion. The other element I considered was the overload of information. Um, a, a historical case and scenario can offer. So students can feel really overwhelmed. Um, there's, they can often look and, you know, they'll, they'll do a quick search. They might do a do Google Scholar search on the Enron scandal and there's 51,000 hits that will come up. Um, IBM as well, you know, if they did a search on Emerald, they're still looking at for reasonable sources, but there can still be over 20,000 hits on some of these um, older case studies. So they may get into that pattern of just repeating common ideas that come from some of these older historical studies. And maybe they don't feel like they've got anything to contribute because it's all said, been said and done before. And they don't feel able to bring any new ideas to it. And also the other problem is they may be worried that there is a right answer and they don't know what that right answer is because there's too many options. So these are all the things that I was trying to, again, reduce. So I was looking for something more up to date. Um, I was looking for something with lots of general opinion and particularly some controversy. And that's where this provoke came in as well. I didn't want to choose something that was a sensitive topic. So I wanted to steer clear of that, but I did want to have something that that would perhaps um, elicit a response. So the the discussion I looked at, um, the, the topic was stakeholder power and corporate governance. And I decided to look at um, Manchester United's bid to join the Re European Super League. Um, I provided they had the lectures and reading on corporate governance and stakeholders. And I provided some starting background information. So there was media responses, there was fans for a minutes, there was a government statement. So there was, there was video, there was media opinions, there was different voices for them to explore. And I, I left them with that. Um, and I was really pleased with the response I got. So when I compared it with a, a, a comparable discussion, um, I found that there was 40% increase in the number of posts on the, the new discussion. But what was most pleasing was that there was an 85% increase in the number of replies to posts. So we actually were developing um, an actual discussion here. And there was a 100% increase in that continue of a discussion. So reply to a reply. So overall, um, the application of the theory was very good. Um, students were responding to each other. They showed interest. They were using emotive language and they had opinions, but they were thoughtful. Um, and, and leaving them with something like this, they, they didn't just provide opinion. They gave some examples and they actually went beyond the resources that I provided as well. And so this really did Helped, it helped my enthusiasm as well. I think that's one of the things that 
was quite interesting because I was engaged with the topic as well as the students being engaged. The one downside um, with this is that I need to keep refreshing some of these discussion posts. And, and when you're working online, that can um, increase your workload because there's quite a lot of work to do um, to change online content. But overall, I found that the um, that it was very refreshing and um, keeping the discussion fresh certainly did create some um, better discussions. And that, any questions, hopefully. Thank you so yeah. much, Susan. You did it brilliantly there, considering you had to rush in. Um, I, I haven't noticed a lot of chat. There's a lot of chat around this subject, people particularly fascinated with the old technology. I was I particularly struck by that chart you put up though, with the number of replies. That that bar being so high is is extremely strong, isn't it? That that must be incredibly rewarding, if nothing else. I mean, quite apart from the pedagogical side, that's just a, a yay moment, surely. Definitely. I, I was quite interested to see that I think we we'd got into the habit of being posts rather than discussions. So to be able to start building discussions and getting that flow of information between the online students, because they are from across the world, they have they are living in different cultures. I did would worry a little bit that I was choosing a topic that people maybe might not be interested in, but that wasn't the case. Um, yeah. And students even came with, oh, well, I was talking about this with my dad and uh, and it, it did generate a lot of interest. That's, that's great. But it seems like it went beyond the football fans, didn't it? Rich, Rich Hind has asked, did or could you tell whether student to student engagement improved as well as student to lecturer? Could you see any signs of that? Or oh, it, any it, signs was of all, that? it was all student to student. It wasn't right. with me. So it was all student to student. I just rounded up at the end of the week. So. It was all between themselves, so I was really thrilled with that because it was a it was a peer to peer discussion. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I think it's important that we give people a chance for a break there. So without wanting to cut you short, that's really interesting. And you prompted a lot of thinking amongst people. Again, do stick around. We'll have a break, people, but just six minutes so that we can keep to time um, when we pick back up. So we'll start again at 3.15, so six minutes from now, and we'll have uh, Bob Green then who's here. Thank you very much for joining us, Bob.